Hi, this is Joseph Tan here from GoodMonday.com. We are still working through the top 10 organizational issues as depicted by organizational consultants Roger Connors and Tom Smith. So we are working on the list bottoms up. We've covered programmitis, cross-functional strife, senior management development, poor performance. And for today, we're going to focus on the issue of work and personal life balance. Should be an interesting one. When we talk about work-life balance, how does it look like? Does it look like a weighing scale here where 50% of my time is spent at work and the other 50% is spent uh, doing my personal stuff? Is this the idea of personal work-life balance where I need to apportion in a balanced way my waking hours to both uh, my time and effort in the office and my time and effort with friends and family. Is this the right picture for work-life balance? Well, I beg to differ. Um, in fact, this picture of work-life balance create more tension than stress uh, because as you try and apportion uh, in a balanced way and try to uh, please your boss and please your family and friends, uh, you, you will find that you are caught in this um, ever-increasing tension of trying to please both parties. And then what happens is that you're frantically moving to and fro. Okay, I'll spend a little bit of time here and I'll spend a little bit of time here. I'll spend a little bit of time here and I'll spend a little bit of time here. And just moving to and fro, to and fro, to and fro, to and fro between the boss and family and friends. I don't think this is a picture of balance. I think it's a picture of tension. Uh, trying to uh, serve and please uh, both parties at the same time. And who suffers at the end of the day? You. If you look at it carefully, it is really not about work-life balance. It is really an issue of work-life integrity. I like the word integrity because integrity comes from the word integer. And integer means something that is whole, something uh, not divided. You know, something that is not held in tension, something that is holistic, something that is integrated, uh, something which is, which brings about well-being. You know, there is a sense of uh, wholesomeness uh, that comes with the word integer leading to integrity. In other words, you don't attempt to balance uh, work with life. Work must be the expression of a life that, uh, that, that is wholesome. Work must be an expression of a focused life. Work must be an expression of a purposeful life. Work must be an expression of a strong life. So at the heart of it, if you see someone who is stressed and discouraged, uh, you don't ask them how is work because work could be the one contributing to the stress. You ask them how is your life? How is the state of the union right inside here? So let me share with you a few practical handles how you can assess the state of your life. In other words, I'm going to share with you five aspects on how we can gauge our sense of well-being. It's really not about work-life balance. It is about our sense of well-being. You know, when people meet each other for the first time, one of the first questions we ask each other is, what do you do? Well, if we expand that and ask each other, do you like what you do each day? Now, that's a reflection of career well-being. And according to Gallup, only 20% can give a strong yes in response. And you know what's interesting? People with high career well-being are twice as likely to be thriving in their lives overall. Meaning, one of the ways to get your well-being is the element of job fit. Do you have the right fit in your job? Uh, are you actually in a place where you have the opportunity to do what you do best every day, leveraging on your strengths? That's career well-being. 
Research from Gallup reveals that only about 30% of employees have a best friend at work and those who do are seven times as likely to be engaged in their jobs, are better at engaging customers, produces higher quality of work, have higher well-being and so on. You see, without a friend, the work is a lonely place. From what is observed in Gallup's research is that the single best predictor of engagement is really not what people are doing, it is, it is rather who they are with. Because there could be a lot of pressure and a lot of challenges, but who you are with, who are those that you can rely on, who are those that will support you all the way. In other words, your social support and your social circle have a very strong influence on your well-being. Now, we, we all know the importance of financial security and so on. Um, so I'm not going to belabor that point. But to highlight an, in, an area of financial well-being that um, many times we neglect, and that is spending on experiences. Not, not spending money on, on purchasing and accumulating uh, tangible material stuff, but spending financial resources on experiences because experiences boost our spirits. So uh, spending money on uh, team building, spending money on training, spending money on vacations, uh, holidays and outings, uh, with loved ones, with colleagues, with friends, are an important element of our financial well-being. It is not a well-being of accumulation, but it is a well-being of investment. Investment in relationships and in creating experiences and memories. And these are the things that fuel one's well-being. Think about it. Do you know that uh, 75% of medical costs are largely due to preventable conditions? Conditions like stress, tobacco use, physical inactivity, and poor choices. So, so physical well-being uh, really have a direct impact on our level of stress and, uh, and our level of, uh, you, you, and our level, the level of issues that we face in our life. Besides the obvious uh, discipline of exercise, you know, we, we, are, we were created in such a way that the way that we are restored is by having a good night sleep. So if, if you work and you live your life in such a way that you can't afford to get a good night's sleep, uh, something is going to snap. Uh, sometime in the future and you could be a part of that 75% cost in the statistics. So don't let this uh, come in the way of your well-being. Uh, think about sleep. Think about getting a good night's rest. It is a reflection of your well-being. If sleep becomes something that you are deprived of, then um, I, I think that work-life wholeness and integrity would be an elusive goal for you. It could be something as simple as just being able to let go and sleep. Now, community well-being is an interesting one. It's the differentiator between a good life versus a great life. It is about your sense of personal mission. Um, what, what is life really about? How, how can you contribute back to the community in terms of your talents and in terms of your gifts? In fact, several studies have shown that there is a link between altruistic behavior, you know, of doing good works and increases in overall longevity and uh, good health. In, in fact, this would uh, highlight the point that, you know, contributing to the community and, and getting involved in well-doing do inoculate us against stress and negative emotions. It's like what goes around comes around and happiness is not something that you get but something that you give and this contributes to an integrated life and well-being. Let me conclude by sharing with you an interesting statistics. You know, 66% 66% of people are doing well in at least 
one of these categories, but only 7% are thriving in all five. Only 7% live life in an integrated fashion. Only 7% have a strong life which is centered around an integrated well state of well-being. So ask yourself today, how is the state of the union? Are all of these five factors being lived out in an integrated way in my life? If that is so, then you won't have an issue with work-life balance because it's really not about work-life balance. It is about living an integrated life, a life that, is, that has well-being in these five elements, career, social, financial, physical, and community. And I'd like to quote uh, in conclusion, something which I've learned from uh, Mr. Edmund Chan from Singapore. He says this, if we learn to live well, then we can lead well. So leading well comes from living well. Think about your well-being today. This is Joseph Tan here from goodmonday.com. Thanks for watching.